What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So I want to go ahead and continue with this top ten uh, NBA head coaches listing. Uh, just do a brief recap. At number ten, I had Bill Fitch. At number nine, I had Lenny Wilkins. At number eight, I had, of course, Chuck Daly. At number seven, I have a guy that probably doesn't resonate with most people today, John Cundler. You know, most people tend to think of coaches from probably the 60s on onward, maybe even the 70s onward. But John Cundler was a very successful coach from the late 40s into the early to mid-1950s. John Cundler won four NBA championships with the Minneapolis Lakers and six overall. One in the National Basketball League and one in the Basketball Association of America before the merger in 1949. Before his NBA career, he was a college coach for the University of St. Thomas and after his NBA career, he was a college coach, and he was inducted to the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 1995 and the College Basketball Hall of Fame in 2006. He is the, I believe, the longest-lived uh, Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Famer. I can't confirm that. I definitely think he's, I know he's at least the longest-lived NBA Hall of Famer. Uh, he lived to be 101 years old. Cundler was born in a mining town of Star Junction, Pennsylvania. Another guy from Pennsylvania, like Chuck Daly. He was born in 1916. And uh, when he was five years old, his parents moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota. And he attended Central High School in Minneapolis. After attending and playing basketball for Minneapolis Central High School, which closed in 1982, Cundler attended the University of Minnesota and was a standout for the Minnesota Golden Gophers basketball team in the late 1930s. Following graduation, Cundler stayed on at the university as an assistant coach to Dave McMillan. He then moved to the high school ranks as the, high, as the uh, excuse me, head coach of De La Salle High School in Minneapolis, Minnesota. After two years there, the United States entered World War II, this would be 1941, and Cundler joined the Navy, where he was assigned to LST units in both the European and Pacific theaters. After the war, he was hired to coach the College of St. Thomas in 1946. Following the St. Paul's College of St. Thomas Tommy's 1946-47 season, the new professional franchise in town, the Minneapolis Lakers of the National Basketball League, extended an offer to Cundler to coach the team. Cundler, however, turned the offer down as he was not impressed with the professional ranks. Team representatives returned, and this time the offer had been upped to $6,000 twice his St. Thomas salary, and Cundler took the job at the age of 31. I want to look at something right quick. I hope this doesn't annoy people, but I like looking at inflation calculators. So, 1946. What would that be in today's dollars? $6,000. That's the equivalency, more or less, ninety-three thousand a year. Now that'd be chump change for a coach today, but ninety-three thousand dollars, I guess that's not too bad, you know, uh, considering what the league was at that time. Cundler and the Lakers were immediately successful a month into the nineteen forty-seven, forty-eight season. Actually, it was nineteen forty-seven. I take that back. Future Hall of Fame center George Mikey became available when the Chicago American Gears folded the franchise. 
out hustling the rest of the NBL and the teams of the rival Basketball Association of America, the predecessor of the NBA, the Lakers signed Mikan. Cunningham then guided the George Mikan led Lakers, which also included star Jim Pollard, to the 1948 NBL title. The Lakers defeated the Washington Capitals and coach Red Auerbach in the 1949 BAA Finals, four games to two. Moving to the BAA for the 48-49 season, which became the NBA in 1949-50, Cunliffe's Lakers won five NBA titles in six years, with 1951 being the only gap in the team's run, a season in which George Mikan broke his ankle at the end of the campaign, thus allowing the Rochester Royals to defeat the Lakers in the Western Conference Championship Series, three games to one. I forget about that. I forgot that he broke his ankle. So theoretically, you could make the argument that had he not gotten hurt, they would have won six championships in a row. And really, eight overall. What would that be? No, it would be four championships in a row. No. Five, uh, six championships in a row and seven overall. But anyway, the first team to repeat as league champions then became the first team to three-peat with Mike and fully healed for the 51-52, 52-53, and 53-54 campaigns. So therefore, the Minneapolis Lakers under George Mike and were just one of, what, four teams to three-peat? Mikan's Lakers, Bill Russell's Celtics, Jordan's Bulls, and Shaq and Kobe's Lakers. Cunliffe's Lakers roster included Naismith's Mas- Basketball Hall of Famer, uh, Hall of Fame players George Mikan, Jumpin' Jim Pollard, Slater Martin, Vern Mickelson, Clyde Lovelett, Slick Leonard, Hot Rod Hundley, and Elgin Baylor, as well as Arnie Farron, Walter Dukes, Dick Garmaker, Frank Selvey, and future Pro Football Hall of Famer and Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings coach Bud Grant. Cundler briefly moved to the Lakers front office ahead of the 57-58 season. Coached by Mikan, the Lakers record was 9-30, with Mikan stepping down and Cundler immediately returning to the bench, going 10-23 and as the team finished 19-53, recording one of the worst seasons in its history while missing the NBA playoffs for the only time in Cunliffe's tenure. Cunliffe then led the Lakers to a 33-39 record in his final season with an improved roster. Despite their losing record, Cunliffe led the 1959 Lakers with rookie Elgin Baylor to series victories over the Detroit Pistons and St. Louis Hawks in the NBA playoffs to reach the 1959 NBA Finals. So they were 33-39 and went to the Finals. The Lakers lost in the NBA Finals to the Red Auerbach's Boston Celtics, with, of course with Hall of Famers Bill Russell and Bob Cousy, in four games. Overall, Cundler finished 4-23 and 3-0-2 with a 58% win percentage and 11 seasons as coach of the Lakers, winning the BAA Championship in 49 and NBA Championships in 50, 52, 53, and 54. In 1959, knowing that the Lakers franchise was going to be moving to L.A. after being purchased by Bob Short, the team moved in 1960. And despite having future Hall of Famer Elgin Baylor on the team, Cunliffe chose to stay in Minnesota and resign from the Lakers position to coach his alma mater at the University of Minnesota. While coaching, he also taught physical education at the university, and he was the first golfers coach to give scholarships to African American players resulting in him receiving hate mail. Cunliffe stayed with the Golfers for nine years before retiring from coaching after the 67-68 season with a record of 110 and 105. His Golfers only finished as high as third in the Big Ten five times and never reached the postseason. After retiring from coaching, Cunliffe remained a physical education professor until retiring from the University of Minnesota in 1981. In 1996, Cumberland was voted as one of the 10 greatest coaches in the history of the NBA. In 11 years of coaching in the BAA NBA, he had a record of 423 and 302, as I mentioned, in the regular season, and an even better 60 and 35 in the playoffs. 
Cumler's 1947-48 NBL championship season team, Lakers, went 43-17 and during the regular season with 14 more wins in the postseason, but does not count under official NBA records. <laughs> Fuck the NBA. Cumler was inducted into the Nace Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 1995 after being lamented as, quote, all but forgotten in a 1992 USA Today column. So he was inducted in 1995 when he was about 79 years old. Cumler was inducted into the College Basketball Hall of Fame in 2006 when he was about 90 years, 90 or, yeah, about 90 years old. After the Los Angeles Lakers won their 2002 championship, Cumler was awarded a championship ring along with other living Minneapolis Lakers players at a ceremony at the Staples Center. After resigning from the Lakers, Cumler remained close to former players George Mikan and Vern Mickelson, often meeting his former players for breakfast. Cumler turned 100 years old in July of 2016 and reached his 101st birthday in July of 2017. However, just 20 days later, on July 23, 2017, John Cumler's long life came to an end, passing away just, just mere weeks after his 101st birthday. Unfortunately, John Cumler's contributions to basketball have slowly been have begun being forgotten because most of the people who were alive when he was coaching led the Lakers, the Minneapolis Lakers to championships and to success are no longer here. And because we have this idiotic, you know, media <clears throat> that dismisses everything that happened before nineteen you know, 1990, let alone 1980, you know, they'll just say he was playing against inferior competition. You know, just dismissive bullshit. And that's why the NBA foundation is, is missing. You don't see players today getting away with... You wouldn't dare see a major league player try to dismiss Willie Mays or... Hank Aaron or Pete Rose, even though he's disgraced, or even Babe Ruth and those guys, they'll receive a lot of backlash because their fans appreciate the history of their, of their sport. Hell, even boxing fans appreciate their history of their sport more than I'm seeing these stupid-ass NBA so-called fans. But anyway, that's what happens when you cater to a cult of personality rather than trying to sell the sport. You might get a cheap, quick buck out of it, but ultimately you're selling the sport short. But anyway, that's all I got to say in this one, man. Tell me what you guys think.